recording is on. All right, hi there. I think um, I think this is wallet scrutiny call number seven. I'm not quite sure. Just tried to look it up real quick. I think yeah, it's, it's number seven. First one for the year. So Mo, just a heads up with your ultra wide screen, your videos turn pretty, turn out pretty flat on YouTube afterwards. You know, you can adjust your your screen proportions, your browser proportions. But yeah. it doesn't it doesn't matter. Doing um, that as we speak. So anyways, uh, we talked a little bit before the recording started. And one thing I'd like to do is go over my designs for the um, kind of the supply chain wallet page layout, which is basically trying to take this concept of the supply chain and try to put a very linear structure to the whole content in a way that it's easy to kind of talk about very specific aspects of the security of each of those products and the things involved. Um, what else do you want to talk about today? Like the um, expert opinions plugin yeah. and uh, warnings. Yeah, that might be a good one. I tried to pick that up uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah, expert opinions. I don't have any new designs, but maybe we can just talk through uh, uh, progress and what to do next there. But okay, I'll, I'll kick it off here with the designs. Um, let me switch over here. So last time, what we talked about was uh, that we that we have this component that uh, goes through every step of the code supply chain from the developer source code. Um, I added a few more steps in here based on recent discussions. So there's custody, privacy, the, app, the um, reproducibility, which I just called application build distribution, then the operating system and the smartphone. We might not need all of those. And each of those steps, um, so there's kind of, there's some consistent elements, like the little info button on the right, you press it and that always tells you what this whole step is about. Um, I'll show an example real quick. So if I look at an example here of application build, I press the info button, it tells me like what, what this whole thing is about. What are we, what are we, what's being discussed here. Um, and then each of those uh, steps also has some unique states uh, based on whatever the content's about. So if it's developer, you know, do they have website Twitter or edit? Do they have no website? Is the source code public or not? How many releases? Different states for the application build, same for distribution, operating system, all of this other stuff. So, and then I took four screenshots of four uh, pages, full pages here on the website, which are simple, the wallet, blue, and then AB core, uh, because AB core is old and deprecated. Blue is a bit controversial right now. And uh, simple uh, basically gets best rating. So they're pretty different in the content that they show. So if we port this over to uh, this updated design, looks like this. So I got rid of this uh, sidebar and this list of links, and I integrated the list of links into the content itself. So from top to bottom now, you have a very simple, uh, um, very simple structure. So it tells you what the, you know, the security considerations are. Then uh, it goes through step by step with developers, where you can find the source code, number of releases, where you can report an issue, then the custody aspects, um, then privacy, because that came up in Discord as well. Then the application build information, which uh, shows you when it was tested, which release, the result, and then a link to the test result. Then distribution with the ratings, link to it, where you can get it, and then these other notes. And if you press the test result, it would take you down here to the actual test result. So I just, I just called it test result now. It just seems very simple. And I'm repeating the icon here so people get it. Like, okay, but here's kind of the brief summary. Here's the extended version. And then right below, you get the application, the previous tests. I also um, gave these disclaimers and do your own research, a little bit of a different treatment. Because the reason was um, they're really in your face here. And it's not, and they're all standardized, I think, uh, on every single page. It's just kind of like a general disclaimer. So um, I put them a bit lower 
and just made them look a little bit different because it's you know, standardized content. I have not looked into um, the sharing options and these embed options here yet. Okay. Now with blue, let's take a look here. So it looks very similar, but here under the, under the custody section, it tells you that the on-chain is self-custodial by Lightning. It's held by the provider. So that's where we get into that nuance. Um, and then it also, you know, this, these are just different states. So we can say uh, privacy not tested since the wallet is custodial. I'm not sure if that still applies or not. Then we have to see also. And because there's no test, it wasn't tested. There's no test results here. Um, this is pretty much the same one uh, for the App Store version. And then here's the AB Core version where you know, we got into this warning that the application has not been updated in a long time. Uh, that's part of the source code step. And there's an explanation. You press the info button, it tells you why. And then here, this one is self-custodial, so it tells you that. Uh, the application doesn't leak any identifiable data to third parties. The application built, the binary was reproducible from the code provided. You can click through the test results. Binary can be downloaded from GitHub. And then you see the test results right here. And then you get the disclaimers in the previous test. So that's kind of where I am with um, trying to put a bit of a linear structure uh, to all of these considerations in a way that it's you know from the source of the code all the way up to you. And then at each step, trying to give enough um, nuance and different states that all the things that you do, all the things you find out, can be summarized very nicely for someone who doesn't want to go into detail, but then you can always get the details, whether it's just general information about what this whole thing's about or the detailed test analysis. So let me just share a link to the Figma file real quick so you can also click around there. I think um, someone's already here in the file. Probably Leo. That's me, yeah. Okay, cool, uh, yeah, so. And I, I took a, a brief moment to see if this can actually be, these steps can be just copied into this um, overlay, this preview. And it might work. There's also expert opinions in here, which I didn't uh, look into yet for the full page design. But yeah, that's, that's why I am currently. And I guess the most important answer is here. Do you think this will work for your needs? Do you think this logically makes sense, is easy to read for, like, it's, it's the right information for a security researcher and also for someone who just kind of wants to know if this application is something they should be doing, uh, using. I think the linearity is not given like that. So for example, you, who has a noisy background here? Um, that might be. Uh, so the custody with the blue wallet, you no, um, what, where was it? At some point you said that, uh, doesn't matter if that, uh, and yeah, that, uh, outdated version, there was an issue that you point to GitHub, but, and say, okay, we got up to the source code here. There was an issue. And then below we, we didn't look into it because of the issue or something. Um, the outdated comes from the distribution and not from the source code because many apps are custodial and outdated. So there is no source code for them. So the linearity there would be, um, okay, we couldn't find source code, but we come from the custody side. So we didn't look, we didn't look if there is source code because, uh, we figured out it is a custodial wallet. Yeah. So, um, we don't work here top to bottom. We don't start at the source code. We always start at the distribution, like the binary is where we start and what information we can find about it. Like then we look at, uh, is it custodial? Uh, first we look, is it a wallet? Is it Bitcoin? Is it custodial? And then if it's uh, not custodial, then we look into if there is source code and, uh, if it can be reproduced, but I'm not sure if it can be all put uh, in such a linear way. 
like the um so like often when 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 i say it is custodial then i don't check if it is open source yeah Sorry, Christoph, you're muted again. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think that's fine. Uh, so there's a difference between your process internally and then how we present it to people. Um, so I, th I think it's fine if e either further at the top it says, well, we're, we didn't analyze this because it's custodial, or if we move the step just further up. I think that's totally fine. There just needs to be. So, you know, one of the things was with. Um, like with the previous design also is that it points out when things are not good, but when, when things are good, it doesn't say anything. So you don't actually know, right? When, it, when there's a warning, you know, okay, something's wrong. But when there's no warning, you don't know. Like, is there something you're supposed to know? Like, is it, is it actually good? Or did someone just not fill in that information or so? So I think the, uh, just consistently having all the steps, um, there with the information and if they typically fall in the right order if that typically works with maybe one or two exceptions i think that's fine but um this is also where it would be amazing if um if we do another hands-on work session where you actually exactly tell me and i apply, i change the design based on how you think it should be so we can yeah. just you know quickly go back and forth and and figure out the right order and some of the copy and all of that or you can leave comments in figma too and then i'll just adjust them it's fine um, either way i think it's um probably fine to have it uh, exactly like you put it and mm -hmm. the dependency on um why didn't we check for this and that doesn't need to be linear in the yeah. process that we do so it's just like oh this wasn't checked because the verdict uh is not compatible because if i have to say because the verdict is still deal for example then um I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to implement it in a way where i can mm -hmm. point the user to why is it happening what is happening and um, often things are just obvious and um, like maybe the project is open source, but it is not about Bitcoin. Yeah. Then, um, then to have just, we didn't check it because we stopped at, it's not Bitcoin. Yeah? I can display that, but uh, um, the sorting would not be so, so linear. Yeah, I have to think uh, this through this through and maybe make a little test implementation. I think it's not too complicated. It's just pushing the code around a bit, adding adding more styling to it. But yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So generally, you think this will work? We just need to do another round, couple round of iterations or so. It um, it will work uh, if if it's uh, never a negative answer if it's if i never say um this, like if i say okay we didn't check this or if i can just uh, gray it out instead of giving it a red because of another item that uh, decided, I, I i don't give it a red rating for source code availability uh, if it's custodial it's just an irrelevant question to ask if there is code when it's custodial. So I don't know if excluding it from the list makes sense or uh, if it's good to tell the user that that would have been what we would look into if it had been a self-custodial product. So yeah, having the full list with grayed out or didn't check um, items is probably educative. You're muted, Christoph. Yeah, sorry, it's noisy here, so I have to keep. I mean, this would be very easy to just move the custody aspect up. And then I don't know yeah. uh, how much we want to get into like the content, like the words, but I wonder yeah. if application build should just be reproducibility. Um, 
just to the layman that wants to know what that step is actually doing. Um, and what the verdict is, I guess, uh, referring to. So I think, sort of like application build, yeah. I think the idea is also to, to uh, communicate general security considerations. So that the build step is actually quite important, that there's more stuff that goes into it than just the source code, that there's also build instructions, build environment. If you build it in one system or another, if your computer is compromised and so on, uh, these things we can communicate even if it's not a open source project. So this is just uh, plain information that we can put on all the pages. Yeah, I mean, see, see, ideally, this new structure gives you the right space and, and the right place where, you know, you, you, you realize you want to add certain pieces of information, you know exactly where it should go. And it will also then make sense to the, to the person reading it afterwards. That's kind of the goal here. But, you know, whether that's really working out, that's what we have to test. I also want to do a, a summary video and send this, share this with people in the community and get, get some feedback. And Mo, if you're doing uh, testing, that will also be yeah, uh, pretty helpful. Yeah, I think it's going to be really useful because I've started my first usability test on the current website today, just before this call. And um, I should have done, I think, at least five by the end of next week. So that will give you the results of the current usability of the website. And then we can test our Christoph designs and then create a prototype of this. And then we can see how people experience this new kind of um, grading grading system. So we can do that. Yeah. Yep. Um, are you comfortable going into the Figma file and playing with this, um, changing some of the text to what you want it to be, uh, or do, would you rather leave comments, or how would you like to collaborate on the next steps? Because it, I think it will require pretty close collaboration. Um, I think I I can work on Figma there too. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. I might just leave comments so to get by on before we change anything. For sure. I mean, the, the you know, designing is planning and um, figuring it out with real realistic content first will save a lot of development time later because you don't have to design during development anymore. That's always the worst because yeah, you do too many tasks at once unnecessarily. Right. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm still a bit um, unsure about the whole concept of the security considerations because it feels a bit like the user should just go to the methodology page because that's where all this linearity and explanation happens. Yeah, And actually many people go to the methodology page, but um, I feel like we are pulling the methodology page into 4,000 review pages. And sometimes I feel like, no, we should just just point the user to the methodology or do we have to save him one click and bring, embed the methodology in all the reviews? I mean, I, I feel with my poor computer who has to compute 10 minutes more for this, but that's not really an issue. Yeah. It's, a, it's, an interesting, so, yeah. um, it's an interesting point because you could imagine yourself, like if you're studying, I don't know, um, science or something, you have the book in front of you and then you have the book with all of the definitions kind of written underneath each term whereas if you have each term and then you have to grab another book to go look for the definitions of those words so then it's kind of like almost two books versus one um i feel almost a bit like christoph's design makes everything into one book so that the student is not having to refer to the second book for the definitions, which maybe in, in, if you put yourself in the user's shoes, they would be a bit more, I don't know, um, you know, not having to grab the second book to go and check what does that mean or jumping to the methodology page constantly to go check, oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, kind of everything's laid out there for them in one easy to see, um, you know, visual. Yeah. So. I don't know what your thoughts are on 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, like the current methodology page is pretty long and and pretty dense. Um, so I think how seeing how the general kind of uh, how that page maps on to actually results from specific wallets is will be useful to the user because just reading you know all the text straight through might be a little I guess overwhelming to the layman and then but if they actually see oh this is what uh, blue wallet is with regards to this section this is why it's important um, I think that context is going to be important I agree with the structure. Yeah, so I, I, ha I actually took, a, I, I copied some of the text in, in here, uh, here in the background, which you can see there, but I actually trimmed it because it did end up being too long. So I feel like these, these can be brief summaries. And then if you re there's a link at the bottom, read more, that's where you go to the methodology page. And that's where you get the whole long explanation, maybe also with information about how to contribute. So if you want to help with privacy or something else, that's where you know, all, all those, um, that's, that's a real in-depth thing, not just a brief summary. That's how I would, was thinking about this. And uh, Karp Fluist is also on this call and he's the, um, he's the, uh, the copy guy. So I think- Yeah, I, I owe you guys some copy. <laughs> you wanna chime in on that or, or, or yeah, feel free to, feel free to chime in. I think always go for concision with something like this. Um, and it looks like that's what Christoph did. Yeah. There's definitely some stuff to figure out. Like, I'm not happy with the title here at the top. It's called Security Considerations and Test Results. It's, it's, two, know, th well, yeah, yeah. it's two things. It's not one thing. Yeah, it should be like, uh, I don't know, so, something else, something that's easy to understand, like is this wallet secure or, I don't know, overview, or, I don't know. I, I really don't know what it is, but it should be a bit more direct and, and clear where it communicates, like what you're gonna get out of this whole, out of all the information, and also a little bit maybe how it's structured and why it looks the way it is. But that might, I think there's a lot of, a lot of finding the right words in this whole, whole task. Christoph, security you... considerations is not too bad because uh, all this is about security considerations. Even if the wallet does not have open source, uh, if it's a security uh, consideration to have open source, then listing it here as such is is totally okay. And the test results is yeah, like uh, wherever we have the custom content for this specific wallet. Um, this is test results, but uh, we don't need to say this specific, specifically in the headline there. Why not just security considerations? And Christoph, do you feel like maybe um, a separate call or maybe a just everyone async kind of maybe looking at the content on these designs and maybe just giving some feedback might be useful as a next step or what do you think? Yeah, I think it would be amazing if everyone took a bit of time and tried to internalize this, maybe show it to someone, think about, like, really look in depth at the different details, kind of map it against the current uh, site content. Yeah. And maybe also not just what the current site content is. Tanner and Leo, I don't know if you have any, any goals for where you want it to be. See if that would also fit within that structure. Um, and then we can do another solid iteration that takes us, you know, a big step closer to, to something final. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely leave comments on just review all all the stuff and is it just more like security overview or something? That's kind of what I was. I think either way. Um, just always trying to knock out uh, syllables if possible. You know the interesting thing with this copy is too. Sometimes you just have to put it in and see it. To know if it works or not. That's why going in and right. figma and tweaking things is so helpful. Yeah. Guys, I gotta jump. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll leave. I'll go through this and leave comments where where applicable. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks, guys. Bye.
Yeah, cool. So we're half hour in. Uh, the other two things were uh, expert opinions, which I have basically no, I've not, I've totally ignored it because I just really wanted to get this wallet page uh, out. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I was trying to figure out this whole master thing a little bit. And what, something that I'm not, I mean, it seems like all the applications, like we're, we're very early and it's very rough, this whole thing. And one of the most complex things seems to be just figuring out where you can actually set up your profile so your name is not just this weird public key. Um, Leo, I, I know you're pretty active there with Noster. Do you maybe know, like ideally this, this, you know, this expert opinions feature does not have a whole profile builder key generator experience in it. That seems like it should happen somewhere else. Is there a good place to link out to or maybe a good website to link like that very, you know, explains how this stuff works in very easy terms? Like there is explainer pages, but of course we can recommend also some Nostra clients. If you want to comment on the reviews, uh, use um, this on the browser, that on iPhone or this one on Android, something like that. So also if you want to create your profile, uh, do that with any of the available clients. Yeah. So there's many available, but um, for example, on Android, it's currently difficult. Um, there's not, no good uh, Android client. Mm -hmm. I started working on one and I almost gave up. And uh, yeah, I, I paid a guy to continue to work while I'm still back with Wall Street. And, yeah. and <laughs> I, I stopped paying him, but it's... Uh, it's a big I task. Yeah, yeah it's, it's um, huge. Okay, so so ideally we can find a place. Um, maybe we can also in all this activity we can we can tell the community that this is what we'd like to have this kind of very simple introductory page with a simple profile creator or so. Um, and the other thing I came across this earlier. I posted this link in because um, I, I understand it a little bit better now. And the thing is, it seems like everyone can post anything from anywhere. So it might get really spammy. And in the link that I posted, there was a thing about um, being able to filter uh, comments that, are, or, that originate on this website. So the user can say, well, I don't want to see comments that were created in some random app by a bot. You know, in a, in a totally different place. I just want the ones that were posted on this website. Something yeah, I found that. Mm, that's not the point. I mean, that's what I do with the accreditation. That I say, okay, I want, I want to avoid random spam uh, <laughs> in, in the user experience. That's why I want to get to the accredited experts, um, and they. They can, of course, spam again, but then I can withdraw their accreditation. But the idea is that people can also look outside of this safe space and look what other opinions are out there about the product. Because um, um, if I editorialize too much, then um, there might be the claim that I'm biased. I don't want to have bad opinions about things or or if, if the reviewers attack Wall Street itself, et cetera, then um, like, for example, Samurai totally will attack Wall Street itself, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's, let's uh, let them have their fun. It's, uh, it's getting its exposure. I think it's okay. Yeah. So um, I want this dynamic. I want to see some drama. I want to get some, some people excited about uh, details and, and discuss why things are an issue or why not. And uh, and I want this discussion as open as possible. And that's why I went with the idea of having the approved opinions and uh, all opinions as you have there in your, uh, behind you. And yeah, the default, I mean, the default in the beginning is probably all opinions because there is just no approved opinions. And, uh, and then when spam becomes an issue, then we can switch on the uh, uh, approved by default, uh, probably. Okay, and I have a couple more questions here. One is, is the approval, is it basically just you collect a list of pub keys 
and right. it will just show list those and that's it. Right, right. It would filter by those, and um, uh, that's the simplest version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say, okay, mycelium sent me a pop key, and the guy that I I know that he works for mycelium shares a pop key with me, and I put it into Vault well, Scrutiny. Okay, this is an approved uh, peer um, Vault developer, and mm -hmm. I would only accept one per team, maybe. But on the other hand, I also would like to have my comments there as an expert uh, on those issues. And so I'm not sure if I should um, uh, accredit myself. I think maybe not. Uh, I mean, you might need some type of an admin role where in certain times yeah, it's important that, to step in and me. say, you know, you know, please be nice or whatever it is. Yeah, like I would be kind of a moderator. I would withdraw the... Uh, accreditation i would give the accreditation i don't like to be in the position of knowing which accreditation authored which post and uh, because um i think the authors might want to have some privacy so they prefer to be just accredited accounts without sharing that they have this or that affiliation on the other hand the affiliation might matter so if they mm -hmm trace too much some product then uh it would be nice to know that it's their own product yeah, yeah. um but on the other hand i think uh people will smell that if it's just uh over the top and stuff and they will give them mm -hmm. some counter opinions if it's just over the top so it's not a big issue so yeah. if, if one of the 20 accredited experts praises his uh, his own product and yeah, if the others don't mind to comment on it, then yeah, maybe maybe it's okay to leave it like yeah, one thumbs up and that's it. Yeah. So and if the others bother to chim in, then they can say no or whatever. But uh, it's not a big issue to have like like if I if it was completely open and I would credit everybody who qualifies as a developer or something, yeah, then uh, the twenty developers of uh, some big bigger company would maybe drown the, the one developer from a, a smaller wallet, yeah? And if they become unfair and uh, downvote all the other products and stuff, yeah, then uh, then that might be an issue. But I don't think that this will derail in such a way. I think there might be many neutral, uh, neutrally rated, but um, uh, criticizing comments, uh, like, where, where people point out issues with certain products and uh, certainly um, there will be positive comments on their own products yeah but uh, but limiting it to one accreditation per company i still don't have the concept of company in wall street mm -hmm. so there is some providers that have usually shitcoin apps but like uh uh, 50 shitcoin apps there that all also support Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't want to give them 50 accreditations. So uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's important to go by provider. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Or limit it to, I, I don't know how to limit it so that we don't get this uh, bias of uh, the provider pumping his own product. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, there are probably some fairly simple solutions at the beginning, and then it might need to get more complex. I mean, a very simple thing is you, you just you just hide posts by default that are just one word, or it's like, yeah. oh, I love it, or you know, just m meaningless comment basically, yeah. because you you, you want to make a statement that this is about actual reviews with with thought put into them. Um, and another question I had is, how do you actually anchor all these uh, Noster posts to this page? Like, how does a, how does a, how does this, it's like an event or note or whatever it's called, know that it's about this page? Yeah, the event um, would not be anchored to Wallet Scrutiny itself. Mm -hmm. It would be anchored to, for example, the SBW wallet. So the key would be Android SBW, um, or the, the application identifier of the wallet and if another project wants to pull in all those expert opinions on their product they could do that okay and and where is that stored in the in the noster event is it in a tag or in a... 
Okay. Where, how does Nostra work? So no, how the, does it work? I mean, I, under, I roughly, I took a look at it. And in there, there seems to be no anchoring to unique IDs. I mean, you have the pub keys, you have event IDs, you have all these IDs, but they're kind of generated. Um, but how do you how do you actually link it to? You know, do you create a, Do you personally create a key for for no. each wallet? Or? No, 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 no. The, um, this is a relatively new um, Nostr uh, implementation. Pro uh, not, it's like a Nostra improvement proposal. The NIP, uh, yeah. NIP, um, where we uh, where you can have a tag by which it is unique. So, so each author can have like, uh, do you understand replaceable events? So, if the mm -hmm. uh, event is of a certain kind, then publishing another one of the same kind um, makes the first one obsolete. Yeah. And the server should not serve the old one. Yeah. And this concept was um, extended to a param parametrizable um, replaceable event. So if the um, if the tags contain a D tag, a, a D duplication tag, mm -hmm. yeah, then um, this was uh, is also being considered. So. Uh, so the events should be unique by author, D tag, and kind mm -hmm. for those events. That um, I, I don't. I think it's forty thousand uh, to fifty thousand. Like, like if the kind is between forty thousand and fifty thousand, then the event should be unique by author and the deduplication tag. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Because we have uh, we have Carp Fluist here on the on the yeah. call, and he's offered to help with the copy. I was wondering if we could maybe just speak a little bit about the copy because we have the copy guy here, and um, I was just I, I had an idea. To uh, so uh, so I'm just the copy guy. <laughs> Not just. Come on, you're a lot more than that. <laughs> no, no, seriously, I do owe you guys copy though. I, I've just the holidays, I can put everything off, but. Yeah. I think I'm going to share this screen. I hope I'm sharing the correct screen. Here. Does, does that make you the survey girl, survey girl, and me like the, the, the pixel pal? <laughs> the copy guy and the survey girl. Oh, goodness. I've, I've been the copy guy so many times. Like, I've, I've been called the copy guy by Jack Dorsey. OK. Sorry, I just need to, I have a whole bunch of folders here, which I'm just going to move out of the way, because otherwise, my personal folders will be on a YouTube video. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So I'm closing my screen again. There we go. And here, I'll share this screen here. Um, we kind of have this as the home page at the moment. Like this is the above the fold at the moment. This is what a person sees when they kind of walk in, um, you know. So, um we start here with a question, is your Bitcoin wallet secure? And then we have another question here. I've done my first usability test today. And the, one of the comments that I got was, oh, I, I have a question here. And now I have another question here. I don't understand why these questions are here, which was some of the feedback. So I was just curious in terms of this kind of above the fold. That's the first thing that people see. What kind of ideas in terms of putting in this part? would be kind of um... well, for, well one of the first things that i noticed it, when i started my extremely thin first draft of this was the two question marks um and you probably should not have that uh particularly the first one the first one is more of a statement about how how or why wallet scrutiny does what it does and then the subhead explains more of that and then their next the the bottom you start to see the thesis what protects your bitcoin from hackers oh, okay now i'm learning more about it um, and even that has too many question marks and then the graphic is question marks too so we should try to try to get fewer question marks in there um otherwise it's almost like work you know you're supposed to be explaining uh, the way that uh, explaining what wallet scrutiny is not asking the audience what wallet scrutiny is got you Got you. So what would you kind of suggest here in terms of copy for like above the fold kind of thing? Well, like the exact 
Sorry. Rarely been a collaborative exercise, so um, I would just have to just jam on it. But you, you definitely want something with it that's got more catch to it than is your Bitcoin wallet secure, which leads with fear. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, a very, uh, not very good, but very simple, different variation is, you know, uh, find security reviews about your wallet. Mm. So in that case, it actually tells me what I'm going to find on this website. And it is implied why, why that's relevant. Close. I, I think it's close. I'm not, I'm not sure that's it. Yeah. 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 So maybe doing a bit of a, a think about the above the fold um, copy for this just that's the first thing a person sees. So they kind of yeah, that that is that is effectively that is your tagline. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, what what is um, more than just an investment? That's your grand thesis. That's what you're doing here. Is your Bitcoin wallet secure? It does not work as a grand thesis, and it needs to have some more catch to it. It can't just it, it can't just be like uh, making you know giving you away a, a resource so that you can check your own wallet or something like that. It has to be more memorable. It has to be more punchy. Ah, I hate the word punchy, but I just said it anyways. Yeah, memorable. Yeah, got you. Memorable, punchy, easy to understand. Uh, yeah, you, you guys probably don't have to think about this one too much. Um, once I actually start digging in, which I will do this week, um, I, I'll just, I'll figure something out. I mean, unless you come up with something that you think is totally genius, uh, you, you shouldn't have to spend your time on it. Like I said, writing is not usually a collaborative exercise anyways, although feedback is. Got you. Cool. We'll leave that to you, Ken, above the fold. We'll there leave we above the fold to you and your magic. <laughs> Fully trust you with that. Oh, yeah. The copy magician. That works a lot better for me than copy guy. Yes. Hogwarts. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Go on, Christoph. Feel free. I just wanted to... Oh, no, I don't, I don't have anything to say here. I'm, uh, I'm just... I'm excited to see how this will all end up. We got some talented people here. Yeah. I think that, that, that Christoph really jumped into the meat of everything which was a good entry point, which is the, the, the grading system. And now that we have that kind of pretty much relatively mapped out, it's pretty much above the fold. And then, yeah, just testing out that new design. Yeah, but you know, even, even with this very dense technical security information, every word really matters. And they need, they need to be consistent across the website. So where you go through the homepage, you see a few things, the same term, terminology, is repeated on the other pages and built upon in a, in a, in a good way. Um, so I think wordsmithing is, this is a big information design and, and copywriting task here. I, I would say, however, that the, the term I really hate is wordsmithing, <laughs> so, just, just to be clear. I actually, I once, I once wrote a blog post many years ago about why you couldn't call it wordsmithing. What would you prefer to be called? Um, car, car fluist? Carp flautus. Carp flautus. What would you prefer? Car, carping. Carping? Carpy, carpy writing. Carping copy. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. We're really pretty it. much, yeah. It feels a lot like kind of a bit of refinement in terms of the copy of the, the above the fold of the homepage. And then a um, little bit of refinement of Christoph's designs, which I guess is maybe a bit of reordering and a bit of a copy. And then we kind of can move towards maybe testing the new design on some people. It feels a bit, yeah. Yeah, and while, uh, <clears throat> while, while you work on that feedback over the next week or two or so, I would like to, for my next step, to flesh out the expert opinions in more detail, all of the different states, maybe also some scenarios where someone says something crappy and it's blocked, or we have a system where certain uh, comments are uh, hidden by default, and then you can expand them or something like that. Just just map out a few different scenarios. Um, also just so we can ensure that it works for you know, many different um, ways the future can play out. 
yeah. that would be my next step. I'm kind of also trying to get a feel of the search terms that people use when they search for wallets of scrutiny. It's one of the questions that I'm, well, not wallet, I'm trying to get an idea of the search terms people use when they would search for the security of their wallet. So one of the questions I'm asking people is, if you were to search open Google in front of you, what would you type in to search for the security of your wallet? So I think that will also give us a little bit of insight into words people are using automatically to search for wallet um, security. Um, the, the little bit of the feedback that I got from the first call that I had today, it was someone who, um, who's had Bitcoin wallets since 2017. Um, he's, I would say he's mid, he's mid technical. He's not highly technical, but he's also definitely not beginner. Um, he didn't understand what the word reproducible meant. Um, he was really leaning towards the word custodial, um, that kind of thing. He wasn't really understanding what reproducible meant. I kept on asking him that. So, um, it would be interesting to, to, to see how the terminology is, is viewed as well. Um, once the new design is out too. So yeah, that's it. That's my two cents. <laughs> Two cents more than I have. <laughs> it's two, it's two sats these days. <laughs> two sats. <laughs> Which is even less. Yeah. It'll be super cool. You know, we've not done such a research before where we've, te we've done usability testing on the original website and then on the new design. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see as well. So looking forward to it. Yeah, and I guess a different question. There's, um, do we want to also start a branding project where we maybe get some community people to, or start a process where we just look at the logo, mark, visual styling, that type of stuff, or should we just leave that for later? I feel like we have enough on our hands, and and just mixing in something else might might slow down the progress overall, but. Um, I yeah, just wanted to throw that out. I think that's a great idea. I'm not sure how Leo, Leo feels about it. About it. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed by all the thing, all the moving parts we already have. Yeah. So okay. I want to get uh, expert opinions out. I want to uh, hopefully get the redesign and and there's the ongoing effort of uh, reviewing wallets and that's completely uh, neglected on uh, right now. I, I not completely, but I, I wish I could provide more, more there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Let's keep it simple. Focus on the, the, the wallet page redesign and everything involved and the expert opinions, and then uh, try to live with those for some time, see how they work out. I'm sure there's a lot of behind the scenes work. Yeah. that uh, maybe Mo, Ken, and I are not even aware of. Yeah. And um, I guess another thing that I was wondering about here is if if there are some, if in this new content structure, if, if we should, would you like to have new ways in here to try to ask people to contribute missing pieces? or to do another test when it says, well, you know, this test, last test was seven months ago. Here, click and create a new one. It's about time. Here are the instructions, or I don't know, some way to, to kind of place, or whether it could be in the disclaimers at the bottom or so. Um, some way to, to get more testers in. To, to open issues if there's some details missing or if, if things turned incorrect over time. The, with the projects that have source available, they usually have issue trackers. So mm -hmm. um, my stance on that is if they don't update, update their issue, then the situation remains as it was when we analyzed it. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually aware when people create uh, update their issues. So, uh, and the custodial ones, they usually don't switch stuff custodial, <laughs> even if it's two years later. Yeah. So, I wish there was more stuff to filter by. So, for example, 
does this world support lightning? Is it planned to support lightning? So stuff like that. So it would be nice to have a features feature where maybe users can contribute feature lists for products and hopefully the maintainers do their own feature lists. But uh, it's just not feasible to do this for uh, for the many products that we have. So I don't know. I don't know how to get features into World Scrutiny. I wish this was collaborative with other projects that look into many products too. And uh, for example, the Wallet Metrics guy does look into features of products, and he, is, he would not be opposed to share information with Wallet Scrutiny. So maybe. But he has, I, I think he has less than 100 products. So mm -hmm. it would be nice to agree on a format and then see how to get more more contrib contributors to fill in the gaps. Yeah, uh, I think it's similar to another conversation we had. Uh, so, you know, people can always just go to the website and learn about what the features are. Um, the what we talked about last time was, you know, whether to pull in more information from the Play Store, for example. And then the question was, well, is this just kind of a replica of, of the of the Play Store or their website, or is this really very uniquely closely focused on security and everything related to security? I I try to only collect and display stuff that is really relevant. So I um, I use the data that I get from the Play Store. I don't copy the uh, full description of their products, uh, but I I get, for example, the latest version. When was it released? When did we re review it? Uh, um, of course, the logo that you can identify it and stuff. But uh, I don't I don't pull like I mean we could pull in what are the permissions of the different Android wallets, but I'm afraid that it's, it's getting too Android focused. Because the big, big, big elephant in the room is where are the desktop wallets? Yeah. And desktop wallets, there is no. Oh yeah, let's add, let's add uh, a short description. Yeah. It's not. It's simple like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is not an API where I can get all the desktop wallets. So yeah. um, I try to keep it with little information and with stuff that is generic to all the wallet products. And uh, it's just so convenient with the Play Store that the stuff is just uh, added to the script and then yeah. where to put it. Oh yeah, then there's the star rating. Yeah, the star rating is nice, but I, I even lean towards removing it because it is not really a good um, proxy for security, maybe for usability, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's why in, in, in my updated designs, I removed it from this very prominent spot, oh, yeah. basically down to where it describes the distribution and, yeah. um, up here. Yeah, so it's a very small link. So it's still relevant. Like if it's something has a million reviews, then you can maybe trust it more than something that has five reviews, you know, just generally, uh, but it's not a super strong signal. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess but, something we haven't looked at yet is uh, what these pages look like for hardware as well. But I don't know if you want to even tackle that right now. I, I hope the design would work for hardware too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the distribution there is, um, yeah, uh, the companion app gets it from, yeah, it's not Play Store. So, it's really getting more nuanced and more stuff to explain. But the design that you propose allows me to um, to gen generically explain the issue without uh, filling in the information for every uh, single product. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm also going. Um, yeah, I might, I might tinker on this a little bit further then, but um, your feedback will be in Figma or. Slack or yeah. Discord, wherever will be super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Should we wrap it up? Yep. Sounds good. Let's wrap it up. Are we cool? I gotta jump into another meeting anyways. All right. Have fun with that one. Any <coughs> anyone clear on what, what
everyone's going to do next? Um, I'm going to jump in. I'm just going to say what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue with the usability tests on the, um, the original website. I have that takes quite a lot of time to do the test. It's an hour each and then to summarize the results. And then I'm also going to provide copy feedback in the um, design files that the has created. That's it for me. I'll look into the Figma and um, I'll also, I mean, hopefully we can asynchronously look into the um, warnings design. Yeah, that, that's quick. something that's on this in Discord right now. There was a post about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I took a note here. Awesome, cool. And yeah. we're going right, to wrap up here and go home. Wrap it up. Dinner. Time for dinner. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording. Bye-bye. <laughs> Time for dinner.